Hi everybody, thank you for having me here today. I feel absolutely blessed and honoured to be around people like yourselves. So thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Andrea Welsh. I'm also known as Andy Marie. I'm my background is from the child children's campaigning activism. Yeah, with Angie on the street here. We've been in four years. I've known Angie, and we've just you know become friends. It's actually through Angie I became part of this party. Um, and how it happened was just it was just I know it was a godly thing because I was actually in Rochdale, where I'm, I'm originally from. I live in London, but I'm from Rochdale. I was visiting family, and something told me to ring Angie. I went over, I, I was meant to go back on the train that day, but I didn't, I went to Angie. Pat McGuinness was there, John was there, John Lawrence, and it just all, it, it was just in divine order. So that, I let God follow me with what I do. And with this being a Christian party as well, it just makes me feel so safe, because we've had so much when you stand up like this and when you do things like this and you talk about the government and you talk about the elites, they come for you. They come for you. I'm on a five-year order, I'll just tell you now, from Sir Mark Rowley. Sir Mark Rowley's trying to shut me up. He's put me on a five-year order. The same as Tommy Robinson. The same one he's on, Tommy Robinson. So so it is very, very, you know, it's been, it's been like this. But with this being a Christian party, this is where I want to be. I like everything about this and I like... Um, what we're trying to do with the British people forever, from wherever we are. I'm Irish descent, so I'm a first generation immigrant. My dad's full Irish, Southern Irish. Um, and, but I was raised in Rochdale, then I moved to London. I've always been a bit of a whistleblower and I've always been a bit of a pain, you know. Uh, yeah, I took, I took a corporate company, I won't mention their name, but I took a corporate company that I worked for for 10 years to an employment tribunal. Um, I whistle blew on the school that my daughter was at for the racial abuse, racial abuse and everything, so there you go. But how I became a children's campaigner was, I asked uh, social services for help with my daughter, Ua, who suffers with ADHD, autism, dyspraxia, etc. Um, it got, I got very sick and she got very hyper and I asked for help and it got out of control. So it ended up with my daughter being placed in, into the care. Obviously, I was devastated, absolutely heartbroken, as you can imagine. It was, I've got a 30 year old son, never a social worker. Now I've got an ADHD child, you know, I'm having problems, help me. That's what I was asking for, but that didn't happen. What happened was just absolutely, you, you, you couldn't even, you know, you'd have to write a book to say the whole seven years of the hell of what my daughter went through and myself. I was tasered by the Met Police, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been arrested. I've been arrested for child abduction on my own daughter, who's fourteen years old. She ran home. She kept running home. So what they do now in the care system that's meant to be caring for our children? Yeah, they section them. And to, yeah, talking about synchronicity, we was at the we was at the train station, and we actually spoke to a girl, and she was so friendly. The forthcoming, we got talking to her. And she'd explained that she'd been in secure units for three and a half years. So we had a little chat with her and she did mention Andy Burham. She said he'd done a lot for her because he's wiping her record clean. Because that's what they do with children in care when they run home. When they criminalise you and they criminalise the family. But they, who's they, this Andy Burham? Can you, uh, he's a, I think he's, he's either... Um, is he the MP for Manchester? Yes, he is. Yes. Andy, Andy Burnham. Burnham. Andy, Andy Burnham. 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 That was it. Mayor of Manchester. Oh right. Okay. So I, I. Yeah. So there you go. So she was. You know, he done a lot for her. She was in secure units for three and a half years. She had scars. That God bless her. She had scars on her neck. She. Her story was just compelling. But it, you know, he's now helping her. But it's too late. The damage has been done. Yeah, the, the, she should have been helped. She should have been shoved into a secure unit. She should have been, you know, nurtured in a nurturing environment. And this is what we want for our children. When they go into the care system, 80% of those children are abused in the care system. That's a, that's a huge amount. I'd say it's more. Oh. I think the removal from a loving family is abuse yeah. in the first place. Yeah. The amount of times my daughter got dragged out of the house kicking and screaming. In the end, that's why I just dived in and I was like, let me give her a hug because she'll go if you let me give her a hug. It was just insane, you know, the police, because she was a runner. 
Okay, so then I started looking into it and I met Angie and started looking into statistics, you know, how much money's behind all of this. It's all a money incentive, guys. I'll just give you an example. The CVAA um, that does the funding and uh, for the government, for the social services and stuff, and uh, out of 3,300 uh, children that were adopted, they did like a survey and they showed that um, each borough at each borough got, what was it, 1.3 million pounds. And these 3,300 children that have been adopted had given revenue of 7.2 billion pounds. So they are, children are a commodity. That's what it boils down to. The children, it's, it's <laughs> for the money. Yeah. Uh, one adoption yeah. is 38,000 pounds for that adoption. And this is what we're trying to stop, is that it, it's a forced adoption. And Pat and I were speaking, I was trying to explain to Pat, you know, the difference between forced adoption and adoption. And then I found this leaflet, it was like, again, God. It was in my bag, it's been there about two years, Jane Kelly. And oh. uh, yeah, and, and, and the difference is, is that forced adoption is where they take the child from the womb. Um, I was there with um, somebody, one of our friends, in hospital and we had to walk out and leave her baby there. And I had to, you know, consult. It was just horrendous because she has slight autism. <laughs> They're actually taking children now off soldiers because they've got PTSD. There's children in care because their dads were in the war and fought for this country. Oh there's, there's, there's soldiers that are homeless on the streets, yet we've, like you say, we've got immigrants, illegal immigrants, living in five-star hotels, giving... <laughs> I don't know if anybody you know about the, uh, the military base, and there's, um, I think there's 2,000 housed there and it happens to be into a military base, and mm. it happens to be all the um, armory underneath, and there's a gym, and there's also a basket, basketball place, so they can go and play basketball. You know, you're like, we've got homeless on the street that are fought in the war, yet we've got these people living, I mean, three meals a day, and they've been given a hundred and such a day. Yes, John? Uh, um, I, I just want to say, um, I, I mean, one of our policies is um, to, to build like detention camps and things like that. When it when the time comes when illegals are mm. but but what we was gonna do is use them camps for um, local communities and that afterwards. And this is the perfect example. You could have a an area where there's housing where you could have a manager to look after the single mothers yeah. and people who have a bit of issues are mm. and you could have a living manager in that, you know, block mm. of flats or, or houses. Yeah. These are the kind of things that we want to do with the party. Yeah. Rather than just like build prisons, stone prisons, mm. build like a, an estate, it'd be a detention area at first, then when everyone's gone and it's cleared out, that will yeah. be used for communities. But you know, we, we should put more into supporting young mothers and stuff like that. Mm. But you, you obviously know we do go on about family. Yeah. And the breakup of the family unit is mm. why so many kids are easily took into care. Yeah. I go on about it all the time. Yeah, well, just to say, every 20 minutes of the UK, a child is taken into care. Every wow. 20 minutes. That quadrupled in the pandemic, so that would have been a child every five minutes. I've worked it out, something like that, yeah? Because obviously, everybody was at home. Um, there was more domestic abuse. It's a, you know, the main, the three toxic, we call the three things that, that, that they will take a child... Uh, forcefully is um, drugs, um, drug abuse. You could be clean for 10 years though. You can be clean, but they'll say, well, because you was on drugs, the future risk of harm is to the child. And that's what the training for the social workers is. It's all based on the future risk of harm. Hence where we've got soldiers having their children take, because you have PTSD, no, you haven't abused your child, but you could in the future. You know, you possibly, okay. possibly could in the future. That was brought in by Tony Blair. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tony, to say his name. He's saying his name just makes my blood go like this. But, you know, Sir Tony Blair. I had a phone call with him, didn't I? <laughs> <Tick -tock. laughs> um, I'll speak about it later. Um, yeah, I had a phone call with Tony Blair. Um, he's in the future at the moment. So, you know, because everything he based this thing on, the white paper, was that it gave social services the hand to take a child on the future prospect oh no one can see into the future that means that's, so that, that's the, we're a christian yeah, yeah, we're a christian yeah. party that's witchcraft yeah yeah that is witchcraft and it so happens that the witchcraft act which it, its name changed but i look back at it 
And about a year before the white paper came in that Tony Blair brought in that for the future risk of harm ended, and then people could can, can now do witchcraft. So look into the future is witchcraft. Mm. So I've never voted, guys. <laughs> I'll just tell you now, I've never voted in my life because I've always kind of known from a young child, I used to always say to my friends, they're not the real government. They're, they're up there. I, I just don't know. I just knew mm. that our government just wasn't right. Um, people do say, oh, you should vote because why should I vote for two evil? You know, there's no one giving me any hope here. Um, but I've got hope now standing here and I do feel so proud to be here um, with you guys, like I said before. And um, I, just before I finish, um, we do want to abolish forced adoption. We want no more care orders made on children merely on the likelihood to suffer significant harm. Yeah. And we want, and we want, um, yeah, I don't want to say sorry, freedom for parents to be protest, protest. So if a parent yeah. feels like this, they've been done wrong. Yeah. Still the freedom to protest in all areas. Um, you know, my daughter's own now. I'm very lucky my daughter's own now and she's 20, but the pro she's scarred. She's got a scar down her face, she needs dying care. She lost all her hair through stress alopecia. My son, on the other hand, and they didn't house her. They're meant to house you. I've got all, this, all what they're meant to do on the .gov.uk, their website. It, they make it look so gleaming, you know, you City do, of yeah. London, like, oh, they get this, they get that. They don't. They don't. 30% of the homeless are from the care system. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And uh, the prisons are full of care leavers. Mm. So they haven't cared for them. They're not caring for them. They're not caring for yeah. children. 83% um, of children in care are white, British. 10% are mixed. 7% are um, black, British or black. And 4% Asian. So um, my daughter's part the Asian. She's part black and Irish. And I had a little conversation with her and she said, <laughs> like, she's very, you know, she just says it as it is. And I was saying, you know, don't you think it's weird it's 83% of white families, you know, that, it, that children are being taken from. So I'm trying to educate her, you know, I'm trying to educate her in my little way. And she said, well, well, Asians are better, you know, she said Asians are better parents. Literally she just said, and I just went, she went, the, the more so, yeah. She's, she, she has the right to say that because she's part Asian. I can't argue, like, like you know, well, you, you've got this Irish mum, so, you know, but, you know, but she, she it, that's what indoctrines into her. She's been made to feel that I'm this white woman that's, like, had this, you know, mixed-race child and that she's been failed by the system, but she thinks it's me who's failed her. Yeah. No, I didn't fail her. I've never failed my children. I have a 30-year-old son who's an entrepreneur who's doing exceptionally well. And um, mortgage rates have gone up, so he's, that's double. That's another thing as well. You know, we need to, like, even, you know, yes, yeah, social housing, we're running out of social housing, but my son's worked from the age of 14. My son has worked so hard. He, had, he, he saved money for a mortgage, and then we've got the COVID, and then he's, his mortgage doubled. He's got three children, and, um, you know, he's in a position of, what, you know, where to go from now. He's living, uh, he's working his backside off, yet he, his neighbours are like, you know, on benefits, living in the same property and getting everything paid, not going to work. Mm. So, you know, I've got like one child that's not, yeah, I've got one, one child that was not housed when she was meant to be housed. And, and uh, you know, when she left care, she was meant to be housed. They haven't done that. They put her things, they put her things in bin liners. I've got a video on my social media and they shoved them and said, come and get your stuff out. Yeah. So, birthday, 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 birthday. Oh, the birthday yeah. present for us. So, um, just wanted to say, uh, the, look out for um, something that Angie, myself, and John are going to be doing. It's called Ungagged, and it's obviously National Housing Party Ungagged, and it will be on YouTube, I believe. And we'll be talking more about this, and and uh, I'll talk more about you know, it's a money, it's a money incentive. Yeah. You know, it, the, we, the children generate so much money. One child in care can generate a million pounds. And I had a big argument with someone yesterday on TikTok because um, I, I do our social media. And um, he is a psychologist for children with ADHD and all this, that and the other. And 
and, and I, I got on the line, okay, I thought I'm going in there. And, uh, you know, I had a bit of a gut. Everyone's like, oh, he's brilliant, what he does, what he does. And I said, no, I said, just let me just say something here. You're earning money out of the children that are being mm. ripped out of families, loving yeah. families on the future risk of harm. Why would you do it for free? And we were arguing then, you know, and I said, well, I do what I do for free. Mm. I've been doing this and talking on streets like Angie, and we do it for free. Yeah, we spend our own money. We do this for free because we do it for the children and we do it God's children. So, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, well, it's yeah. really, really, you know, um, I could go on, but I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant.